afternoon all and today I'm looking at the wearable di data display project and in particular the battery because this 240 milliamp hour battery is really too small it only runs this thing for two to three hours now although at some point in the future I'm thinking of having this thing come on when you press reset stay on for say a minute and then go into low power mode and go to sleep um, I still think that the power in this cell isn't really sufficient to drive this thing. So I bought this new cell. Now this is 3.7 volts, 600 milliamps instead of 240 milliamps. So it's more than twice as uh, large in terms of capacity. And I've started to take this thing apart. And you can see that there's a protection board in there, which I don't really need because the protection components are on the charger board. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this cable off, remove the uh, protection board, and then just see what I'm left with. Right, well now that's got the battery down to its bare LiPo pack. Now fortunately it has plus and minus marked on here, so I know that this is the positive. It didn't take solder terribly well, so I had to get it quite hot to do that. And of course that's a little bit worrying when you're soldering so close to the chemistry but that's done now on the back of the charger board these two points here are positive you can see the red wire on that side and I happen to know that these are actually connected together so although this is nominally the battery positive and this is the positive output they're actually common so what I can do is I can mount this battery with positive directly over there and get, that gives the battery the offset across the board that I need for it to be in the right place for the wearable. So on the wearable device, A4 and A5, the two pins for I2C, have to fit in there like that. And then that means that the battery will be in approximately the right position left and right with the positive soldered down onto there. Now there'll need to be some sort of support to hold the battery and the charger board together and I'm thinking of making a little plastic self-adhesive um, panel for that. Now the other thing is this connector, which I thought was a good idea at the time, is in the way. It's stopping the battery sitting in this space here. So I'm going to take that out now. So I've mounted the LiPo onto the charger board. Now this piece of strip of plastic is just to uh, help keep the two together. All it is, is I cut a section away from one of these business card holder boxes. Uh, some double-sided tape on there to hold them together, but it's still a little bit flimsy, and you can see the positive connection of the LiPo flexing there. Now, the other thing I've determined is that this back plane on the charger board is actually connected here, so it's a positive back plane. So I don't really want to rest this negative terminal down onto it uh, without a little piece of insulation tape, so I'm going to stick that on now. Now the negative has to connect to this inner connection here, which I'll do with a piece of wire, because the outer connection and the inner connection are separated by the MOSFET, the 8205A MOSFET. Uh, well, it's not beautiful, but it is wired up. We've got the uh, positive LiPo connection going to positive on the charger board, negative insulated from the back of the charger board through this wire to the negative connection. Uh, this is the output from the LiPo going through its uh, battery protection components and the input is here and I am actually charging it now you can see that the red light is on now because this is a bigger LiPo I should really change this resistor because it's charging at 130 milliamps and I could probably charge it about up to 300 milliamps but it looks quite difficult to get to so I think I might just tolerate it being a fairly slow charge for the time being unless I uh, decide that there's a better way of remaking this but anyway, that's charging up. Now I need to check whether this LiPo powers the uh, wearable. So on the back of the wearable, I've connected uh, this connector. I've cut it down short so that it uh, just fits onto raw and ground. Now this wire with the connector on actually came from one of these uh, VGA fans, which I used recently to mount a 10 watt LED. I'll just cut the wire off, it happens to be the right size, so that fits very nicely. So now the next thing is to plug that into uh, my 
lipo pack like so and then check that this is functioning which it is it's not giving the um, proper lipo percentage yet because i squared c isn't connected which is this a4 and a5 so let's make that connection have to look at it to see what i'm doing there and uh, if i get those pins to actually contact i think it may have crashed let's reboot it yeah so once those pins are in contact with a4 and a5 then it does read the lipo percentage correctly so that battery is half full i uh, i might give that a charge up so there it is um with the display still down the bottom the display will eventually um, actually come up the back here with wires running through to these points here but that will be the last thing I do now at some point I do need to commit to these A4 and A5 um, I squared C connections and uh, maybe now is the time to say okay that's the final arrangement I'm quite happy with that let's solder those on now, I'm still not entirely happy with this bendy positive connection that's not going to last forever so I've cut another self-adhesive strip which I'm going to mount on that plug there to try and hold this lipo in place so that's it I've soldered A4 and A5 on this side so this is all one assembly now um, that's my second strip I might actually even put a piece of double-sided foam in there just to strengthen that a little bit uh, I still have the ability to disconnect power from the board. This wire is hardwired onto the Pro Mini on raw and ground, but I can plug that in and out of the LiPo pack. And then when plugged in, there it is. And it's all working. Reading the data being sent by the transmitter and showing the LiPo battery percentage and voltage. And of course that bigger battery is now going to last a fair bit longer. Yes, I think I will uh, put some double-sided in that gap there. I know where I can get some 3 mil double-sided foam. Uh, so all I need to do now is remove the uh, display from the connections on the Pro Mini on those wire links and bring that uh, back around this side. Now that will mean flipping the display upside down because when it's this way around it will be the wrong way up but that's relatively easy to do in software there are two commands to mirror image in the x direction and mirror image in the y direction the layout of the display pixels so that's easy to do and then as i say i'll probably write something so that it goes to sleep after a minute or two of use and then you just hit reset and it wakes back up and uh, you get to see the display again